Uh, kia ora, no, my name is Therese Mangos from the Pacific Division Aotearoa and the Compost Collection. Kia ora, my name is Buffy, I'm from Ranui Community House and Garden. And today we're going to show you how to compost. And what we're using is actually a, a recycled um, recycling bin uh, from the old legacy um, council of Waitakere. Um, since the um, recycling bins have all been upgraded, we're going to reuse the old ones into compost bins by cutting a hole in what used to be the bottom of it and drilling these holes on the side in order to create some airflow because good composting requires moisture, air and great ingredients. So we're going to show you how to do it. So the first thing is finding a, a good site in your backyard or front yard, wherever you'd like to put it. But the main thing is that um, in the sun is ideal, but if you don't have any sun, it's still okay. But ideally, so we've got a lovely spot here, actually at the Ranui Garden, right next to the lasagna garden, which we've already just made. And you're putting it straight on the ground, so it's nice and level, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. First thing that we start off with is uh, we layer with some twigs, some kind of hard material that takes a while to break down because we want to create that airflow. These are just um, old corn stalks from um, the last season's growing. So we're just going to put those in the bottom to help with air. They're quite um, soft, so they are um, bending over when, we, when I put them in down there. So a whole layer. Is that enough? Mm -hmm. My arm's not long enough. <laughs> yeah, so when you say a layer, how thick yeah, would you? Something about like that. Okay, about three or four inches thick. Do you want to come and have a look? Okay, instructions to go and have a look and maybe the camera might pick up a really dark cavernous hole but with the holes in the side of it, well you should be, oh no that's looking funky actually. Yep, let's look. So once again this create allows airflow yes. rather than our crap sitting hard down on the ground. Yep, so um, now then we're going to start by layering a combination of greens and browns. So the greens are high in nitrogen, kind of fresh, moist material, like your weeds, your lawn clippings, and your food scraps. Food scraps. And your browns are your kind of dry, brittle material, which is we call carbonous material, like leaf litter, dried lawn clippings, um, coffee chaff, cardboard, paper, um, all those kind of things from the household. Mm. So um, we'll start with a brown layer, okay. shall we? Uh, so I'll throw you some uh, raked up. We've got some, we just raked up uh, heaps at this time of year. Beautiful oak leaves. So we're just going to layer that. Now this is actually, um, we're making here, is actually what's called a hot compost. Can you pass me that spade? But we don't, have to do it like this at home. Hot compost is when you make it all at one time so that we're creating the, the mass of material that will help accelerate the breakdown process. But if you're at home and you don't have all these materials that are readily available, you can just do it little bit by little bit as you create the material. Because most um, people want to you know, compost their food scraps, so you're going to throw that in as you create them, which is daily. So maybe at the end of the, of the week when you've got a container full, you throw in your food scraps. What sort of percentages of um, brown and green are you yeah, putting I in go, this? I'm really just 50-50. Okay. Yeah, so if you, when you, if you throw in a bucket load of food scraps, then you add a bucket load of brown material. So what, out, what I do at home is have a whole pile of like, leaf litter just sitting there. So every time I throw my food scraps in, I just grab a handful and just cover it. Just put a little layer of... Um, brown material over the top of it. Okay. So I'm just using the spade to make sure that it's going to the edges and not just piling up in the middle. That's fantastic. And we've got some, doing, doing a bit of weeding. So we've got some great nitrogen, nitrogen rich material here, what we call greens. So we're going to do a layer of that and this is a mixture sure they've got, you know, pomp free and just general weeds. What you got to go in there is a layer. So just for our registered families, you're actually getting a, a two-bin compost system. So Therese, can you step us through the benefits of having a two-bin compost system on your property? Sure, well, you know, because they're actually um, they're quite small compost bins, 
so it won't take too long to fill one up so what the idea is is that once it's full you can have the other one um, going right next to it and stuff like that and while you're filling up this one this one will be breaking down and over the time that it takes to fill the second one we're hoping that, um, that this one will have composted through to create the healthy soil that we're after which is you know, all your food scraps is going to turn into soil and when it is time to do that, all the, the way of harvesting it is very easy by just by lifting the bin. And that's why the shape of the bin is really good because it's got a kind of a tapered shape to make it easy to lift off. Okay, women call it tapered, guys call it truncated. Truncated. Because we like those uh, syllables. It's a polysyllabic word versus a tapered. <laughs> that's really anal too. <laughs> Sounds like a tree. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So to make, it's really easy to harvest. You take it off. And then the, the top part of, of the bin will probably won't have broken down as much as what's right at the bottom. So you just take off whatever hasn't been broken down and put it back in the other compost bin and harvest the good soil which will be on the bottom. Put into your lasagna garden or your, your other garden bed. Cool. So now we're going to put in some browns. And this is what um, we've got here uh, from a roasting, a coffee roasting place. It's called Coffee Chaff. It's actually the husk of the coffee bean. And it's, uh, it's a great um, additive for the compost. It's light and fluffy. It smells great. Yeah, yeah, absorbs moisture. Oh. Yeah, so holds a lot of moisture. Yeah, it does actually. It takes it a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah. So we started with a brown. We've gone green. So we've gone brown again. We're up to this level here at the moment. Yep. It's only halfway there. And then we're going to add some more greens. And I'm going to grab some lawn clippings. So if you're making a compost heap um, week by week, you know, as you're doing your lawns, um, save a few clippings, put them in the pile next to the compost heap, so then it's just ready to go. So when they're fresh and green like this, um, they're called a green or, um, you know, nitrogen material. But if they're just left in a pile and they brown off, then they become carbon, brown material. So depending on what the colour of them are, then you can add it either as a green or a brown. Isn't it? Perfect. Now we've got um, another source of brown that everyone has around their house. It's cardboard. So this cardboard's been um, in a wheelbarrow full of water. And what we're going to do is just rip it up into smaller pieces so it's easier to break down. And before we put it in the wheelbarrow, we actually removed all the plastic tape from it because it never, will never break down. So around the household you've also got um, you know, your toilet roll inners, your vacuum cleaner dust, all that kind of stuff is um, great fodder. Egg cartons and if, egg um, cartons. Yeah, thank you. if people like to cut hair at home, yeah. hair mate, so if you've got mates who are, God what do you call them? Barbers. Um, Barbers, hair cutters, yeah. go and see them about picking up their supply of hair at the end of the day, brilliant. Does pet hair count? Yeah, it's a dog or a yeah. cat. Yeah, worms love that. All breaks down. Yep. Basically, anything that was once alive can be composted. It will break down. What we don't like in a compost is, you know, plastics and cans and polystyrene. Animal poo. Yep. Yes, yeah, so uh, while we're on it, let's talk through um, some of the things that you wouldn't put in your compost heap. Yeah, I wouldn't put anything that um, reduces some um, circulation, so oily and fatty food is what I kind of tend to stay away from, like um, even soups, anything that's going to be gluggy, like your porridge pot, that's, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> so the whole, just understanding the environment that you want for the um, microorganisms and bacteria to flourish, they need air, so anything that's going to glug it up, so, the, yeah, that's, so that's, that's my kind of big, I don't know, what would you add to that? Oh, weeds, not just weeds. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we are going to try and create a hot compost. If you do it right, the temperature should go up to plus 60 degrees within a couple of days, within a day, and it'll stay at that temperature for a few days, and that should kill off most of the pathogens and kind of weeds that you put in there, but sometimes it doesn't. How about no. things like um, meat, bones, uh, citrus, onion leaves? 
Like there's heaps of different reading out there. There is sort actually. Of if you're doing a nice hot compost, yeah. they shouldn't be a problem. If you're just doing um, a little bit of food scraps once a week and then a little bit of brown, it's not going to get very hot. But if you're making it like we are today and just going to fill it right to the very top with it, that sort of like those layers, then it should get really hot and it shouldn't be a problem. Um, yeah, yeah, so the thing to be aware of is when you add meat and fish is that it's high in protein and it will attract flies and it will attract rodents. So mm. if you don't like those kind of things in your ground, your compost, then that, that's kind of the main reason. What I would do instead is dig a hole in your backyard somewhere for the, the bones to go in. Yeah. And we still want to put, you know, put them back into the soil because it's full of blood and bone. Totally. Um, it's all healthy. It's all healthy. It's just about, uh, yeah, so we do have, you know, rats are in our environment. So to reduce the risk of um, rats is, is trying to keep your food scraps towards the middle of the bin, always covering it with a layer of brown yeah. material. And if you really wanted to go all out, you could actually put a, a grill on the bottom of your compost bin before you put your compost, start building it. Yeah, that stops the rats stop from the digging rats from coming down and, and under. under. They, they do burrow. Totally. They do. And nibble. Fantastic. So we're off to greens now, aren't we? So I've got some more um, weeds. weeds. And I've also got some um, coffee grinds oh, here perfect. too. Yeah. So um, even though they're brown in colour, um, they are high in um, nitrogen. So we call those a green. So from your local cafe, can you them around anywhere? Well, even your, your, your Z station, your, all your um, petrol stations. Petrol stations. Um, anywhere that sells coffee will have coffee grounds, so it's a great resource to find in your community. You'll find that a lot of them have them bagged up and just put to the side saying free. Um, and if they don't, then maybe just ask them. They may have something that they do with them already, but um, often they don't. They just dump them and they have to pay for that. So if you're offering to take it for free, I'm sure they'll love it. You're making friends with your local um, fruit and veggie shop, because they've always got uh, lots of um, material. Veggie scraps. Veggie scraps. Uh, if you don't have a lawn, then get to know your neighbours, ones that do have lawns, that you can go and say, hey, can I have your cooking? Cool. Things to be aware of when you um, do harvest from the community is to know where it comes from, so and to know what uh, kind of practice they have. So you don't really want to get lawn clippings from someone that sprays totally. around up around their edges. So yep. just a little bit of awareness of that kind of thing. Because basically we're, we're making compost for the garden we're going to grow our food in this so we want to make sure it's as healthy and nutrient rich as possible. Yeah you want to have a nice diverse um, mm. materials as well you don't want to just put in two different kinds of grass and cardboard yeah. it's a bit like eating takeaways all the time that you're going to get some nutrients but not a not a whole lot yeah you want to have a nice varied diet. That's right. compost bin does. Exactly so yeah what you put in is what I always say is what you get out so the yeah. more variety the better. You know, a balanced diet, that's what we're after, that's what the compost and the bacteria that are in there, that's what they want. So as an activator, which we've um, just used it in the lasagna garden, um, some, some ways to kind of make this compost go supercharged is to add things like um, manure, whether you have chickens or guinea pigs, a horse, quite often ducks, ducks, pony clubs around the place. Clubs. Yep. Um, ducks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're all good. Or um, off, if you live near a beach, especially after a storm, heaps of seaweed, that's a perfect um, activator for, you, for here as well. I collect my wood ash from the fire. Yeah, as long as it's not colonised. That's it's right, in. so um, yeah, untreated wood only um, to put in. Yep. You, you can go to the shop and buy compost activator, but I wouldn't recommend it. You can do the same with, um, you know, stuff for free. Now Again, we'll composting really follows a waste minimisation theme. Totally. Uh, if you kind of look and read some of the stuff that Auckland Council have up online, they've done studies over the years where statistically they can uh, provide figures like uh, between uh, 40 to 45 percent of curbside waste accounts for compostables. So, um, a whole purpose of my backyard garden project or, or any gardening project is when you're creating lasagna gardens and composting. Um, all of that waste that you're throwing out can actually be used to benefit you through the garden. Yeah. And, and from an Auckland perspective, I think it was back in like 2015, Auckland Council were murmuring about um, having curbside charges for the pickup of organics. 
Uh, starting out west in September. Right, so this is a fantastic way, once again, to save families money. Yeah, I'm not too sure what the cost is, but um, yeah, why would you use it when you can make your own compost? Yeah. Totally. You know how to do it, it's really easy. You know, we haven't done anything too special, have we? Just ripped up some cardboard and tipped in some layers. Absolutely. Yeah. And like, you know, the thing is, now, we're giving you guys um, two raised garden boxes, you know, 1200 by 800 by 200 high. You get one with growing compound to plant your seedlings in. The other one, like we mentioned before, is to do your lasagna garden. But, you know, if all things go well and you become aspiring little green thumbs right from the get-go, there's no reason why you just can't keep turning that back lawn, which you would otherwise mow all the time, into uh, flourishing gardens again. And these are all really cool steps to do this. So we just put um, some more browns in now. We just put the bucket load of greens in again. Once again, that could have been a bucket load of food scraps. So it's only because we just um, we used, have we <laughs> used, used all, all our food scraps in that one. <laughs> yeah. So um, it can, can be anything. So we're still continuing the layering. Uh, maybe some more chaff. So what I was doing before with the spade wasn't, um, you know, trying to chop anything. It was just trying to get um, the materials down the sides where my arms weren't long enough to do it. And uh, we do want to press out some of the air because there is a lot of air in here. So uh, we're just kind of pushing it down at the same time. So if we're in like the middle of summer where everything is really quite dry, uh, the ladies would probably be applying a sprinkling of water per layer. Actually. But because things are quite moist that they have, yeah. um, it just comes down to a look and a feel. I'll give you this, um, yeah, we will we'll do a little bit of water for this chaff because it is really dry and it does hold a lot of moisture, so we can afford to put a bit in. So we're getting close to the top now. We are. Yeah, so we're getting close. We've got some more greens. We'll put the finish off this uh, wheelbarrow of lawn clippings. Yep. Okay. I'll go to the and do that. And chuck those in. Now uh, we needed one more prop to turn it off. We needed like a remote control tap turner offer. <laughs> offer. That would be great, wouldn't it? Oh, she's sitting over there on the computer. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And another great activator is um, some old compost that you may have got from another bin because it's actually, what you're trying to do is the activators will have all those microorganisms yeah, in already in them yeah. so that uh, they can help um, grow more healthy microorganisms. Well, we're getting pretty good up here. But I think we should put the last bit of cardboard in here yep. or leaves. Maybe. I think leaves okay, go might leaves. get in um, those edges a bit better. So that's the difference between um, having two women do it and, or, as opposed to having a guy and a chick doing it. The guy would probably want to debate what they want to put in it, but the girls work really well together. So no more. <laughs> okay, warning to herself, don't <laughs> work with guys is making compost. Okay. <laughs> And then we can use that cardboard to, yeah. to top it off. Perfect. So, because we are using a upcycled, upside down recycling bin, we don't have a lid. So what we're going to do to use as a lid, use a bit of cardboard that we prepared earlier. Mm -hmm. Perfect fit. That will just kind of go on the top there. Because we, we want it to breathe, and, and it's, all okay. it's okay to have moisture in, coming into it, but you want to shed a bit of the big heavy downpours we have in winter. To, to not saturate the bin full of water. And we have got these handy little holes and channels here so that when this holds water it can come out the side so yeah. you're not going to flood it. Spunky. So yeah. we're about, there. totally, so we're about three weeks, I think we're about 18 or 17 days away from uh, D-Day which means that these two little guys, your compost bin and your lasagna garden, have got 17 days to do some really wonderful things. Mm -hmm. um, so you can come back here and see what's happened. Totally. Time. Mean. Well, I'm happy with that. Yeah, it's great. Cool. Let's get growing.
So we're going to be doing this with each of the groups. So we'll have quite a few little composting lasagna gardens happening in here. So that's four. Totally. And we'll be doing four sessions. Two sessions. Two. There's only yeah. nine to so only nine, nine to twelve. 12. And 9 to 12, Saturday and Sunday. Oh, so it's only 